Hi all, welcome back to my channel by Spark Pulse. So in this video, we are going to discuss some of the Deloitte interview question that was asked. So the source of this questions are LinkedIn and YouTube and from my friends also. So this will be also coming in two parts. So some of the questions was, uh, you know, very common to both KPMG and Deloitte. So I have not included them in the Deloitte interview series. So let's continue this series. So the first question was this what is the difference between managed tables and hive tables or oh, external tables in hive right so let us discuss this so there are some feature like uh, you know this can be aspects like data management data location data life cycle file attention flexibility data control and dependency so on the data management sites hive manage both data met metadata and as well as data files right for external tables hive manage only the metadata so this this follows like for all the you know general uh, data warehouses like the uh, that way data warehouses manage the metadata for external tables and that files are managed by the you know uh, the the source side or wherever the data is residing right so we are responsible basically for them then data location is stored in location managed by hive is stored in external location then data life cycle hive control everything and this are like controlled by managed externally then hive may delete <clears throat> right both metadata and tables but when we drop the external tables only metadata is dropped and the data remains intact right and flexibility limited flexibility because if you want to use data outside like suppose our data is residing in s3 bucket and we want to you know create a hive table then it is better to create an external table out of it because the uh, the data file or the data thing which is residing in s3 may be used by some other systems also right so it's good to have an external table then data files are tightly coupled with hype and data files are decoupled from hype. This is a very good thing actually allowing for external access and manipulation. So this is one of the thing like it is, it is this question is very common and you know interviewers love this question and generally for the experience of about like two years to three or four years like they will be asking such questions. Then explain what is row based and columnal based file format. So this is a very good question like uh, what is the difference between columnar file formats and row based file format the storage system for example uh, in the columnar file format suppose we are having a uh, table suppose we are having employee id employee name and employee salary right so in the columnar file format what will happen all the employee ids will be you know stored in uh, stored together then all the employee name will be stored together and all the employee salary will be stored together so in this way the files are stored and in this way the data is stored so it is very uh, efficient while we read and even when you know storing the data because you know we can uh, use compression techniques because we are having similar data right so in that way we can use compare uh, compression techniques whereas in row based file format data is stored in row based like in the first row employee name employee salary then employee id like that in the second row for the second employee and for the third employee like that it will be storing so that's why it is uh, that, that that's what it is stating here data is stored column wise with values from each column stored together this means all values from one column are stored contiguously then data is stored row wise with each rows value stored together this means all values for a single row is stored contiguously as, as what i explained right then compression it is very uh, compression uh, compression effective efficient right because the value of one column often have similar data types and vice versa is in this case to achieve high compression ratio it is you know challenging then query performance well suited for analytical queries and aggregation as columnar storage allows for faster access to specific columns reducing io basically it is read optimized then suitable for OLTP because it is basically write optimized however it may suffer performance issues while dealing with queries that involve reading or processing that is it is one thing like whenever we are you know uh, working with data warehouses or OLAP kind, OLAP kind of you know structures so therefore then we should go with columnar file structure and when we are dealing with OLTP then we should go with row based then is schema evolution schema evolution is easy in columnar file format because all the values are supposed to together then we can just add one more value right so it is very easy right but in row based file formats it is very you know challenging Schema evolution is more challenging as in columns. All the table structure will be changed and the previous rows will be you know, hampered. So more write operations than more IO operations. So it is you know very time consuming, resource consuming, everything it is. 
then use cases ideal for data warehousing analytical workloads where queries involve aggregation filtering and analytical functions then commonly used in transactional database the like OLTP kind of parquet orc apache Aero, some of the examples of columna file formats and json csv some of the example of row based file format so next go for, let's go for the third question and difference between olap and oltp so if you are um, if you know the difference between columnar base and row base you will be having some ideas of oltp and olap right let us discuss this purpose manage transactional data day-to-day -day operations and analyze historical or aggregated for decision making generally uh, you know uh, the end system end users like the bi team or the data scientist team you know or the consumer team work with olap and oltp we we, we update data in oltp the customers right and the workload handles high volume of transaction insert update list in real time or near real time then primarily high workload for focusing complex analytical queries for data analysis database structure you can see normalized and normally it is g normalized based on some schemas right it's no so star or snowflake like if we are having multiple dimension tables we can go with snowflake otherwise like we are having limited number of you know or dimension tables we can go with star a yeah star then data access patterns then query complexity is one of the uh, aspect then performance then examples uh, examples you know use cases you can see online banking systems e-commerce platforms like amazon flipkart inventory management systems they all work with oltp you know, on the oltp side of thing for the olap data warehouses business intelligence bi reporting platforms yeah then often let us see one more uh, performance optimized for high speed transaction processing emphasizing data consistency concurrency and integrity and it is optimized for analytical processing with a focus of efficient data aggregation and analysis so this is also one of the questions just pause this video and you know take this screenshot or whatever i will i will be also sharing the ppt of this so you can download that and just go through this before giving any interviews and you're expecting some theoretical questions then this is one of the you know, important uh, spark fundamentals as was the ask question in Deloitte and in other MNCs also like how does a spark perform suffer operation so first of all what happens uh, the spark jobs are divided with the action keyword then inside an action keyword inside one job the jobs are divided into several stages with a, a wide transformation keyword right so stage execution spark jobs are divided into stages where each stage consists of a set of tasks that operate on subset partition tasks within a stage can be executed in parallel on different execution nodes. so this is the thing then how does this shuffle operation happens right in the when we are doing wide transformation in a DAG we can see like you know codes and shuffle so we can see this map face so first of all what happens all the you know data which is which is required that you know, whatever transformations are required and in the same partition it is kept you know with uh, a hash function or range partitioner so this this type two types of partition are hash or range so all the uh, in one uh, node the transformation has or computations are done then shuffle phase comes is a mapping phase like transformation is then one non partition shuffle phase happens during the shuffle phase the data is transferred between the nodes to ensure that all records belonging to the same key are grouped together this involves network communication and disk io as data is exchanged between executor nodes now suppose we are doing group by we are doing group by customer id uh, and then suppose for group by customer id one some data is in uh, for customer id one some data is in node number one some data is node number two therefore the shuffle is required right this is shuffle operation and what it it, it you know it makes sure that uh, all the group id uh, employee id number one should come in same node this is the thing this is the main task actually you know if you when why we want to shuffle the data then reduce phase in the reduce phase task aggregate or process shuffle data with each partition to produce the final result so this is the result phase so this is how you know spark performs shuffle operation in this uh, steps let's go to the next question df does explain and its significance so like basically df does explain what does it provide it provides information you know on the execution plan what spark is thinking and logical plan physical plan optimized plan the plan it basically you know shows like how spark is going to you know um, carry out a transformation logic and uh, what are optimization technique they are using what are the pruning techniques they are using spark is using right so basically it's 
it does this whenever we know df.explain command it literally show us that then some key aspects like logical and physical plans of data from operation then the stages and tasks involved and data partitioning strategies then optimization techniques so this all information we can gather with uh, explain command whenever we run data frame then this is one of the question you know which is uh, a question of self join and it is asked uh, not only in deloitte interviews what uh, whenever you're going to give any interviews whether be it be mnc or be it be startup or any company you know be it be product based so like this is one of the questions that you can expect from the you know, expect from the interviewer like suppose interview basically wants to get the manager name of the employee so this is the query that you can use let's you know employee name employee name i'm not employee name as manager name from employee dot t and in to left join m on e manager id and m dot employee id so basically it tests our you know join uh, knowledge and also it tests our you know basic understanding what we need to do so this is basically called self join and this is the syntax of this query so that's all for this video i hope you liked it and do let me know if you are having any questions you know for any companies i will try to you know gather some information and i will try to create a video on that interview series and project is also going on so i'm trying to you know get time and create that uh, project soon and i will be uploading it soon yeah thank you keep supporting bye bye